In the previous video, we learned how to scan and clean up a watercolor raster image to prepare it for vectorization. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually vectorize the image in Adobe Illustrator. So today's video actually came about from a viewer request. I had used these other flowers here on a previous video, and the viewer wanted to know the process by which to vectorize watercolor flowers like this. So these flowers I had actually gotten from a stock website, and they were available for download already vectorized. So since I don't have the original raster image, I chose a different floral to demonstrate with. But at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a comparison of the end result of my vectorization and the end result of the vectorization from the stock website. So stay tuned for that. All right, so we're getting started with our vectorization now. We've opened up the TIFF file of our cleaned up image in Adobe Illustrator, and this image is still a raster image at this point. So if you go to the layers panel and drop down the sub layers, you can see that the bouquet and the individual flowers and leaves that I had separated in Photoshop are all on their own sub layers here, which is what we want. When you have multiple elements that you want to vectorize, you're going to make sure to vectorize each element separately. So for this tutorial, we're going to vectorize the bouquet. I'm going to make a new file on a size 11 by 17 artboard, and then I'll go back to the TIFF file that I just opened and select the bouquet, hit Ctrl C to copy, go to my new file that I just made, and hit Ctrl V to paste that bouquet alone onto the new file. And I'm going to put this bouquet on the left side here and then hold Alt Shift and drag it over to make a copy and place the copy over on the right side here. So before I start vectorizing, let's just look at the layers panel and we can see right now that we have two sublayers that each say image. And if Illustrator labeled a sublayer as image here, that means that Illustrator is telling us that it's just a flat raster image. So this sublayer is for the image on the left and I'm gonna lock it because I wanna leave this one unchanged. We're gonna keep it as a raster image. This other sublayer is for the image on the right, which is the one that I'm gonna vectorize. And I want you to notice what happens in the layers panel later when I vectorize it. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a large rectangle in any dark color that contrasts with the image, and this will be a temporary background that we'll need later on. Make sure that this rectangle is behind your artwork. Now, I'm just going to warn you before you take this next step that you should close out of any extra files or programs that you don't need to have open right this second. And that's because this process is going to slow down your computer a bit. Illustrator will even show you a message warning you about this. So make sure that you do that so your computer doesn't crash. So the first thing that we have to do is take our selection tool and select on this image. And then I'm going to go up here to the control panel and next to image trace, I'm going to click on this drop down menu and select high fidelity photo. And you can see what's happening here. Illustrator is now vectorizing this and you're just going to wait until it does what it has to do. It's gonna look something like this, and you can see here that it even just blanked out completely because it's really making the computer work pretty hard when it does this, but this is to be expected. So now it finished, and in the layers panel, you can see that it now says image trace instead of just image, but it's still gonna go through another change. Next, I'm gonna show you how to use the image trace settings now, but real quick, if you're finding this content useful, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It'll help me to keep bringing you more useful videos like this. So we're going to click on this box right here, which is the image trace panel. And this is going to give us some additional settings that we can use to tweak what Illustrator did in the first place. So you can tweak your vectorization if you're not completely satisfied with the result. So the parts here that I want you to really notice are that you can tweak the amount of colors in the artwork and the number of paths that it has. These are the two settings that you're probably going to play around with the most. You can move the slider over to either increase or decrease the amount of colors that you're allowing Illustrator to have in this vector design. And if you move the slider here for path, you can also increase or decrease the amount of paths that the design will have, meaning how many of these wavy shapes will be inside here. The reason you might want to increase your paths is because sometimes you're going to get these little empty spaces in your artwork when you vectorize, and increasing paths causes there to be less of these little spaces. But increasing paths also gives you a bigger file, and so it's a trade-off. I prefer not to increase paths very much, but rather I recommend that you just zoom in to check for these spaces and fix them manually. It's pretty easy. Whenever you find one of these spaces, just hit A on your keyboard to select the direct selection tool and click on one of the wavy shapes, and then just pull on one of its anchor points and pull it so it covers the empty space. Or you can use the delete anchor point tool to delete one of the anchor points near the empty space so that it'll fill up the space instead. 
you only have to fix the really noticeable ones. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to get every little one of them because they're so tiny, chances are no one will ever notice them. When you're deciding whether to make any changes to the amount of colors and paths, you just have to use your judgment to see if this is making your artwork look better or worse or what kind of look you want to achieve with that. But usually when you do high fidelity photo the first time with an image like this, it turns out pretty well and you don't usually have to do too much tweaking. So I'm just tweaking here to show you that these are options that you have and sometimes you might want to use them. Next, I'm going to go up here and click on expand to expand the artwork into vector artwork. And you can see that now you have all these blue highlights here. And if we zoom in, you'll see that those blue highlights appear because Illustrator just made all these little wavy paths out of the artwork. It's now vectorized. And if we click off of it, and if we zoom out to compare the raster artwork versus the newly vectorized artwork, the two images look pretty much the same. But this one is still a raster and this one is now a vector. Just one thing though, when it vectorized, it also gave us a white background again, but this time it's really easy to get rid of. You just have to select the direct selection tool to click on the white background and hit delete to get rid of it. And those enclosed parts on the white background will also appear, but you'll also just use the direct selection tool to click on those and delete them as well. So you really can't tell the difference between the two images unless you zoom in a lot. At fit to screen, you can't tell, and at 100%, which is the size it'll be if someone prints it, you can't tell either. You can only tell when you zoom in really, really close, so it doesn't matter. The way that you can tell that it's vectorized is that when you zoom in really close, you're gonna see all those little wavy paths here. And when you click on each one, you'll see that each one has its own fill color. Also, now when we look at our layers panel, we can see that this bouquet is no longer just a flat image, but it's a group consisting of many, many workable sublayers. These sublayers are all those little paths that Illustrator created. If we zoom into our raster image, you'll see that it looks kind of grainy or kind of blurry because it doesn't have all those paths like the vector image. And when you touch it, it doesn't have a fill because it's a flat image. So if you're satisfied with how your vector looks, you're done. You now have vector artwork that you can scale however you want and you won't wind up with a blurry image. So these separate flowers and leaves that I also brought into Illustrator can also be vectorized in the same exact way using image trace. But like I said before, just make sure to vectorize each element separately and also keep each element grouped. And now that these flowers and leaves are vectorized, you can take the separate flowers and leaves and you can use them to make a repeat if you want. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but if you wanna know how to make a proper repeat in Illustrator, then you can check out my how to create a seamless repeat video and I'll have that linked down below. So remember at the beginning of the video, I told you guys about the flowers I had used in a previous video that were already vectorized. And I said that I would show you a comparison of the stock website's vectorization versus mine. So let's zoom into my flowers and get another look at how the artwork looks. So when we zoom in really close, we can see the wavy little paths with all the different colors in them. And when we zoom into the flowers that I downloaded from the stock website, as you can see, they look the same as my vector artwork. They also have the small wavy paths and are made up of lots of colors. So you can tell that they use the same process that I did. They also used image trace. This is pretty much the standard method by which a lot of raster images are vectorized, especially watercolor prints and other prints with blended looks. So I hope you like this tutorial. And if you wanna learn how to make prints like a pro, check out the rest of my print pattern playlist. See you there.